Hello class, welcome to chapter 17. In this chapter, we're going to be talking about technology in long-term care. Once again, we look at our learning objectives and we will review them again after reading this chapter. Technology is becoming ever more important in long-term care and as this slide mentions here, the ways in which technology can be used fall into two broad categories. They are both applied technology and information technology. So when we talk about applied technology. This is tech technology has much to offer in maintaining or improving a person's functional independence in several ways, including artificial functioning. Um, these are devices to provide assistance from wheelchairs to robots. Emergency notification. These are panic buttons to notify when help is needed. Telemedicine, which is remote monitoring of a consumer's condition, conferencing among healthcare professionals, and consultation with specialists. Information technology, the application of certain types of technology to the collection and use of information. This includes data input, data management, and data output. Categories of computerized information applications include clinical applications, this is admission, assessment, and care planning, consumer safety, record keeping, and quality measurement as mentioned here. The administrative applications include um, staffing, um, maintaining and completing those schedules, and then financial management. The strategic support applications are mentioned here, and we're going to be talking in more detail about these in our discussion questions and as you read the chapter. So we're not going to go over them in great detail here in our, um, in our lecture. Networking applications, there's involvement in the integrated health systems that are constantly um, being improved, updated, and new programs coming along. The coordination of information information um, is truly one of the biggest um, savings of time in preventing errors. Patient scheduling and managed care contracting are also mentioned. The system-wide applications, we want to take a look at these as well. Besides the electronic health records, you have automated patient records and then the personal health records. The quality measurement and improvement includes OSCAR, the um, RAI and MDS programs, um, OASIS, and then the, let's take a look at consumer information and education in the chapter here. The privacy concerns and HIPAA. One of the two major purposes of the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or HIPAA, is to protect the privacy of consumers' health information. HIPAA creates a set of national standards governing such electronic transfers to protect the privacy and confidentiality of consumers. These standards cover the following errors, um, access to medical records, notice of privacy practices, limits on use of personal medical information, the prohibition on marketing and confidential communications, as well as complaints. Cybersecurity, all entities relying on computer systems must today be concerned about cybersecurity. Loss of either personal or organizational information could greatly disrupt the ability to provide high quality care. Okay, let's take a look of look at the benefits. The benefits for long-term care systems allows care providers in long-term care, acute care, and home-based settings to efficiently collect, manage, and share vital information about the client's medical histories and care regimens. Share, sharing of the best clinical practices, 
the use of clinical guidelines and quality measurement tools, more timely and accurate exchange of financial information saves money and avoids waste. The ability to improve research into both clinical and administrative methods, as well as the increased ability to provide consumers with the information they need to make care-related decisions. Now, when we look at the benefits for providers, IT can help them operate more efficiently and effectively. It produces cost savings by avoiding duplication and waste and allows them to optimize their resources. Um, the benefits for consumers include consumers receive more and better services. It can improve, um, well actually I IT can empower individuals in long-term care facilities and their families, helping to reduce isolation among seniors and caregivers. Now, consumers living at home benefit from being able to access information about providers, services, and eligibility using the internet. Okay, some of the barriers um, to using IT, it's the lack of commitment. If it is to work effectively, providers must commit to really using it. Lack of understanding, that commitment must be based on a full understanding of what IT can do and not do. Financial investment is making use of, um, making use of IT is not inexpensive, but the outlay is worth it. Um, the need to upgrade old technology. Most providers getting into or maximizing use of IT must scrap their old systems or invest in a significant upgrade. Changing operational systems. Operational systems must change, not just technology, if it is to be successful. Obtaining IT expertise. Most providers will need outside assistance. So the options for um, acquiring healthcare IT. Um, providers have several options available to them when they decide to acquire new IT or upgrade existing systems. Developing an entirely in-house system, purchasing software for its own hardware, PCs, data entry terminals, etc., outsourcing the entire system development and maintenance to a contract firm. Okay, so guidelines for selecting an IT vendor. Um, analyze the business requirements. Conduct vendor searches. Request for a proposal, an RFP um, development. Proposal evaluation and vendor selection and contract negotiation strategies. We covered this rather quickly, but I ask now that you look at the summary, read the chapter, and then go over those learning objectives again. And thank you.